Right, one particular method is called capture, mark, recapture, and that's used to count populations of animals. Now, mark, mark and recapture is used to determine the total population density for really highly mobile species in a certain area, where well, you can't just stand there and do a bit of a head count. So it's, it happens in three stages. So firstly, they capture, you know, a random sample of a population is taken, you could use nets, traps, cages, whatever, and the number of animals is counted. All right, that's the first stage there. What happens is they are then marked, right? You know, you might be talking paint, you might be talking tagging of the legs, whatever it is, and the animal is released back into the habitat. Now, what happens is that they then take a second sampling, okay? After they're released back into the habitat, they will take a second capture, and this is called recapture. So it might take, you know, a little bit of time. You obviously wouldn't do it for so long that the original organisms have died, but you wouldn't do it the following day, right? So the random capture sample will be set up again, a number of animals will be captured, they're counted, and really you're looking for how many are marked from that original capture and how many are not marked. And we can use these values to figure out an, you know, an approximate population size. Sorry, there we go. Okay, so we use then the Lincoln Index. And this here is the Lincoln Index. And it is a formula that basically helps us figure out using the mark recapture numbers, um, you know, how many would be in the full population. So if this is our formula, the capital N stands for the size of the population. That is what we are trying to figure out. We then have to look at the number of individuals we caught to start with and the number of individuals caught the second time. So these are the numbers of what you've actually taken in, in your nets or your traps. The little m, however, is the number of tagged individuals that you found on the second capture, right? It can be written like this. So you're looking for the total population the number of animals in the first sample, the number in the second sample, and that is divided by the number of marked animals, all right? For a, for a precise population estimate, this requires about 20% of the population is marked. So that means sometimes scientists have to assume and take huge, um, huge samples in that first one. Marking can sometimes be really difficult for small animals as well. Right, let's do an example of this. Here is my goldfish pond. I've taken my first sampling. So what have I got here? My first sampling is going to be my M value because that's what I'm going to mark. I'm going to take five in. I can see I've marked them here with the green fluorescent uh, marker. I'm then going to do a second catch and this is my second catch and in that circle I have four individuals. So my little N value is going to be four. I am then going to um, have a look at how many in that second capture are tagged and that will be my little M and I've only got one. So when I look at the Lincoln Index, remember capital N equals M times little n over little M. These are confusing letters, think M for marked, right? Then we have got how many we've got there? We've got five multiplied by 4 divided by 1, which is going to give us 20. Now, if you actually sit and count those goldfish, there are 20 indeed, okay? So really, it's about then comparing your theoretical value, which you've got here, your estimate value to what you actually have. Now, population growth over time can be modeled graphically to see the trends and the patterns, right? Obviously, if we're looking at fast growth, it's in ideal conditions, and this is exponential growth, and it generally looks like this. In an ideal ecosystem with ideal conditions for whatever species it is, remember this is all theoretical, then an organism's opportunities to survive and thrive through reproduction are really, really high. So particularly for those species with that short generational time, that fast reproduction, those really are selected uh, animals, that exponential growth can occur in these conditions. Now we also call this a J curve because funnily enough, it looks like a J. Now population explosions shown in that J curve can happen in situations where a really unstable ecosystem becomes stable again, it starts to settle down. So this might be, you know, we're talking after a fire or any sort of situation. So sometimes even, you know, a volcano um, can completely decimate one ecosystem and then that life, you know, slowly comes back to the area. So in ordinary stable environments, you wouldn't actually see this exponential growth curve unless you've introduced a new species in. So really this is a theoretical or contrived sort of situation, like when we introduce uh, bacteria to a petri dish. Now theoretically, 
exponential growth is possible, but realistically, there's real world limiting factors that are at play on a population population's ability to grow. So, you know, real world, welcome to it. Our logistical growth curves are that when uh, that growth actually hits a plateau. So it shows that the population growth gets underway and then eventually it can't be sustained and it starts to reach carrying capacity, right? We're meeting these ideas again. Eventually that population meets some kind of environmental resistance. It might be competitors, predators, changing abiotic conditions, whatever it is. And the growth starts to slow down, starts to slow the pace and it stays at a more equilibrium. This is kind of a dynamic equilibrium. You can see it still go up and down, but it's not, um, it's definitely not continuing upwards in that trend. This is an S curve. Is this sigmoid growth? Cause oddly enough, it looks like the bit of an S. Right, so we can see that also we need to consider that there will be a death phase. Eventually, after that exponential growth and that plateau off, some organisms might start to die depending on the resources available and how many uh, organisms can reproduce. And you will see that carrying capacity be reached and that up and down trend as well in most organisms. So when we compare them, we can see that there's an exponential growth phase in the logistical growth as well. But remember, our environmental pressures are going to come down onto there um, as that population approaches carrying capacity. All right, this is what we've discussed today.